Hello guys, by the way I'm like this because it's very very hot at the moment, okay over here, well by our standards, okay, so um, we've been told it's going to be a very warm um, weekend and also it'll be warm today. Anyway, this breaking news, Britain could be hosting the Eurovision next year. Now this won't be like a shock to a lot of people because, um, you know, but it is genuinely breaking news. You might think, well, it's not really breaking news because ever since um, Ukraine won, people thought that Ukraine might not be able to host it. And people thought that Britain might host it next year or another European country might host it next year. But it is now official. Ukraine will not be hosting Eurovision next year. It is official. The EBU, which is in charge of the Eurovision, I've put out a statement saying they've looked into it, they've investigated it, um, they've worked with the Ukrainian main broadcaster for the Eurovision and they've come to conclusion that it's simply just not safe enough um, to host it next year and even if it might be safe enough to host it next year it, they could not prepare for it in time, given all the potential problems that um, equipment might get, you know, and, you know, in that even if it, you know, it was safe in Ukraine next year, it takes a, about a year to prepare everything, to fly artists in and out to practice, well, or, you know, some, you know, and, um, you know, things like that, and bring in equipment and set it up and things like that and the EBU have decided that um, because they cannot guarantee it can't be absolutely guaranteed that, it, that the stage and everything would be ready by next year and they also couldn't guarantee the safety of everybody because of the current um, what Russia calls special operation in Ukraine um, which the rest of the world refers to as a war with Russia um, it will na they have now officially stated as I said earlier that the Eurovision will not be hosted next year in Ukraine, even though Ukraine won it this year. So, because of this, the EBU has asked the BBC, which is the um, state broadcaster in Britain, um, to look into whether it could be hosted in Britain. And so it is official. Um, yes, it was a rumour, it was not really, I mean, everybody sort of guessed it, but it's now official that the EBU are looking at the BBC from their perspective as their priority broadcaster, from their perspective, to host the Eurovision next year. The reason for this is because um, the UK came second this year. Ukraine won and the UK came second. Also, the UK came first with the jury vote this year. So if there hadn't been a public vote, um, then Britain would have won it outright anyway. The UK would have won it outright anyway. And only came second because um, lots of members of the public voted for Ukraine. OK, so this is breaking news. Now... If the, if the BBC and Britain want to host the Eurovision next year, I don't see any reason why it could not happen. I know in the past the BBC, to be brutally honest, have tried to throw it. So they've deliberately sent in entries which they knew wouldn't win, purely so they wouldn't have to host it next year because they didn't want to pay for it, because it does cost a lot of money to host the Eurovision. And the BBC is funded mostly out of taxpayers' um, money via the licence fee. And they may have felt uncomfortable about funding essentially a, a music contest, even if it is the biggest music contest in the world, um, on the basis of a tax which pensioners have to pay even, um, the unemployed have to pay, 
every well i'm not sure about unemployed so much that's probably not fair but it depends how much money the unemployed have got as to be fair but because i know if they're on universal credit i forgot if they're on certain t- if they're on oh no, no no i'm not sure um no sorry i'll take it back but yeah even the unemployed have to pay it unless they're a pension or something so only only very very poor pensioners don't pay it unless you know you don't need a tv license for example i've got a television at all and you do not access um B, the bbc player that's one example there are several other examples where you don't need a tv license okay um the simple answer is you don't need a tv license in britain if you do not watch live tv broadcasts or rather tv as it is broadcast or use the bbc iplayer but anyway um so the bbc has often felt uncomfortable about winning it about as well about the uk winning it in case i had to host it as the state broadcaster because the bbc has always hosted it in the past when they've won when we've won um so and i believe we also hosted another year i think uh, um when we didn't win but another country couldn't host it okay so i think i'm, I'm not sure maybe another time as well i can't remember off the top of my head I'm, I've, as i said this is a breaking news story if the BBC want to, and if the British government want it to happen, then the Eurovision will most likely be coming to Britain next year. Given that we came second, um, I think it and I think it would look extremely bad um, if the BBC turned it down on purpose, or if the UK government turned it down on purpose. Um, I think it would make us look very bad if we did not try to host it okay also it would be a PR coup for us in some ways if we did because what many people didn't understand in Europe is it's not necessarily about hating Europe or all Europeans um, um, as to why Britain voted for Brexit they genuinely didn't like the EU and the EU rules and you know EU policies okay and also to control immigration as well which was harder um, when we were in the EU anyway this is a breaking news story I'm sorry for repeating myself and saying one sentence in about seven minutes but there you go guys this is breaking news I, we will see how, how it develops. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.